thank you to Dr. Wilder for preparing this video. Isolation can be challenging for a class 5 restoration, especially if it's near the gingiva. In this example, we're using a rubber dam with a B5 rubber dam retainer, but you could also use something similar like a number 212 retainer. Place the lingual jaw apical to the height of contour on the lingual surface first, then slide the facial jaw about one millimeter apical to the lesion. Use an explorer as needed to invert the rubber dam into the gingival sulcus. With a 271 tapered fissure burr, or round burr if you prefer, create a crescent or semicircle shaped preparation following the gingival contour. Extend mesial and distal to include the extent of decay or the non carious cervical defect. Prepare to a uniform axial depth following the convexity of the surface that you're working on, in this case, the facial surface. Extend into dentin only if the defect or caries calls for it. Be sure to create divergent walls, which will naturally result from the shape of the tapered fissure burr. Bevel all the enamel margins except the gingival margin with a tapered diamond. You can, however, remove unsupported enamel from the gingival margin as shown here. Retention grooves are important for class 5 preparations since they are subject to greater tensile forces. As always, retention grooves are placed just inside the dentin enamel junction with a depth of 0.25 millimeters, half the diameter of the quarter round burr. No matrix is necessary here, so apply 30 to 40% phosphoric acid etch to the entire preparation to clean off surface debris and remove the smear layer of dentin. Let it sit for about 15 to 20 seconds, and then wash it off thoroughly with water and high volume suction, rinsing for about 10 seconds. Gently dry the tooth, but leave it somewhat moist so you don't collapse the dentin collagen fibrils. Apply and scrub Prime and Bond Adhesive with a microbrush to all walls and floors of your preparation. Gently air thin the bond to evaporate the solvent. And then cure for about 10 seconds. Place your first increment of composite material directly into the preparation being sure to fill in the retention features first. With a flat composite instrument, compact the composite into the preparation while also beginning to shape it to match the convexity of the tooth, leaving part of the instrument on the composite and part on the natural tooth structure. Add additional composite as needed and continue to shape the material, dipping the hand instrument into some adhesive to prevent the composite from pulling off and sticking to the instrument. The closer you can get during this stage, the less contouring and finishing you'll have to do later.
Once you're happy with the contour, cure for about 20 seconds or as directed by the manufacturer. Check for any material deficiency within an explorer before moving on to the next step. You can contour the composite further with a flame-shaped finishing burr to recreate the natural anatomy of the tooth. Use light strokes as needed while maintaining contact with both composite and natural tooth structure to avoid inadvertently gouging the material. You may need to hold the rubber dam or soft tissue out of the way when performing this step. Check for flash and any irregularities within an explorer. A number 12 curved scalpel blade can be used to carefully contour and remove flash. Again, carefully hold soft tissue out of the way as needed. You can verify smoothness with an explorer. Finally, you can finish and polish the restoration with a silicone impregnated rubber polishing cup. Green, then yellow, and then white is the typical coarse to fine Jiffy polishing system. You can then remove the rubber dam retainer and the rubber dam. Once this is complete, you can get a better look at the gingival margin and if any corrections or adjustments need to be made. An alternative option for isolation is using a retraction cord and cotton rolls. The cord is first brought adjacent to the gingival sulcus with cotton pliers, and then placed into the sulcus by using a flat instrument or an explorer and carefully but firmly pressing down on the cord along the contour of the tooth, walking it from one interproximal area to the other. Note that you should always start from the interproximal area where the cord is easiest to compact. If the tissue is blanching, select a smaller size cord. An FP1 instrument is another great choice. The retraction cord can also be soaked in a hemostatic agent prior to placing in order to prevent bleeding. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.